Back out here at the raised beds, I see Shadow Man. Anyway, back out here at the raised beds, and uh, yeah, they're doing pretty good. They're, the heat's trying to get to them, and they're starting to just really grow nuts. This, this is the tomato raised bed. We've already picked quite a few tomatoes off here. Quite a few still on, some still being, still making and everything. But I got to noticing sparse branches. Like this little guy here. That is a sure sign, generally, usually, of tomato hornworms. And notice those branches in, in this. This is an Ace 55 VF. Well, I got to looking around and I found our culprit. He's gotten big enough where he's no longer eating leaves. I'll show you a baby one I actually spotted over on this branch. What I did over here was I noticed that there was some frass or caterpillar poop in that leaf there. The camera will focus. Will you focus for me? He wants to focus on everything but the worm press. Anyway, that's worm poop if it'll, it won't focus, but I got looking on that leaf. And you see him? Little bitty guy. Toward the end of him. I lost him. Where is he at? There he is. Toward the end of him. There's a little horn on him. There he goes. Oh, come on, focus again. There it is. That's a baby tomato hornworm. And there's another hornworm. The big guy over here. Let's see, can you spot him? You see the damage, big guy. You see the damage all over the plant. And here he is. He says, forget your leaves, I want your maters and he is going to town and to show you how big he is he's probably he's close to finger size I'm about to pull him off and here's one way to get him off you just now they will spit on you but you grab that horn you, you that, get up and off and there he is I mean that is a huge John wants me to tell you that he grabs him by the scruff to keep them from pressing on you, but that is a whopper. That is excellent catfish bait. When they're smaller, and you can cut this guy up if you wanted to, but when they're smaller, they're good brim bait. But this guy would be great for catfish. Anyway, this Mr. Tomato Hornworm and all his glory. You can, if you, if you have a quite a few of them on your plants what you can do to save them for bait is bring you a ziploc bag out with cornmeal in the bottom of it and you get you know ones this size it would probably take it wouldn't take very many but anyway you put them in you, you put them in the cornmeal in your ziploc bag you shake them up real good and throw them in the freezer and the cornmeal will keep them from bursting or sticking together when they're frozen after that you just throw them out and uh and fish with them. For the bigger ones like this, you can use as catfish bait. And the smaller, the ones probably about half the size, cut them in half and use those as brim bait. They're really good. If you if you don't have any catawba worms coming on your catawba trees, then you can always go with the old tomato hornworms. And we've actually had better luck fishing with the tomato hornworms than we have with catawba worms. Let's see, this plant showing signs of pretty heavy damage. That strip branch there. You see how they really work on the leaves. Let's see if I can find one. I'll zoom back out. Look at all that zoomed in. It's hard to spot them. As big as they are, although you saw the small one, but even the big ones are hard to spot. I've already probably pulled about seven or eight tomato hornworms out, out from this tomato patch this year. Where, where are you at? Anyway, I don't want the whole video of me searching for, to be of me searching for tomato hornworms, but...
All right, let's check out the other Reese beard. Now this is the other one with the two tomato plants. The cucumbers on this end have played out on the end on the other end as well. But this is about the fifth time that the yard long pole beans have put out. And they are dang near ready to pick. And as you can see, there's still blooms of plenty coming on them. Blooms there, little new blooms coming on. Like old green shoestrings hanging down. The tomatoes here are still producing. They're just hard as heck to see with all this growth. We need to, that's one thing we're trying to do today is weed eat around them. The banana peppers are still producing. They're in there. They just, once again, they're hard to see. There's one. There, there's more in there, I promise, but I need to probably trim some of the lower leaves off. And the eggplants are still going crazy over here on this side. These raised beds are really the ticket, especially if you don't have a lot of space, but in general to me, it's so much easier gardening with raised beds. It's easier to get water to them. There's an interesting colored egg eggplant. And on the same plant, mix the soil no. right. You don't have to fertilize as much. Yeah, if you mix the soil with enough organic uh, long-term fertilizer. Yeah, organic stuff, the cow manure and everything else, you'll you don't have to fertilize nearly as much. But if you go too rich in, in organic uh, material, then what happens is and we have had this happen before, we went crazy mixing organic stuff in and you'll get huge beautiful plants but you will not get produce sometimes not all the time but sometimes what will happen is too much nitrogen. too much nitrogen or, or whatever too much stuff to help the leaves grow and the plant grow won't allow the fruits to grow but yeah the eggplants are still doing good just about all these all the plants in the raised bed except for the raised beds except for the cucumbers have done excellent this year Anyway, that's the update. Say bye-bye to big boy. And we'll catch y'all next time.